speech errors affect many families. Maybe it's a subtle lisp or a more noticeable pronounced speech issue. But beyond the technical aspects, these errors can seriously impact a child's self-confidence. My next guest is focusing on how to help your kids let go of embarrassment over sound errors. We love speech therapist Ashley Christensen and the bright light and expertise she brings to topics like this. She joins me with more. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. So you me. work with so many families, Ashley, who struggle with speech sound errors and helping these kids with sounds and with the embarrassment that comes with it that's part of your job absolutely and it's it's so amazing to be able to watch that transformation in kids for sure when is the right time to talk about it if we can jump right in is there a certain age or a certain maturity benchmark that you think I can address this without you know, you don't want to cause any damage or additional additional hurt. Right. Or to bring awareness to it, right? A lot of parents say, oh, well, when do I, I mean, I don't want him to feel worried about it sure. if he doesn't need to be. But I think the greatest part is they are a little bit aware, especially once they're in school age. Maybe they can ask, oh, how's it feeling? Is it hard to do that? Do you notice other friends say that sound, mm -hmm. have a hard time with that sound? How does it feel to you? And surprisingly, a lot of kids when they're five don't really realize that they're saying it wrong and don't have a big problem with it, which is great. But starting a few years after that, second, third grade, it definitely can start showing up with a lot of their friends have it down and maybe they don't. And they us. start to notice at that point. So it's not yes. calling it a thing or drawing overdue attention right. to it, but it is just casually acknowledging and making it part of their part of our conversation. Yeah, and maybe even asking them like, do you want to work on it? Hmm. Is this something you want to learn? Because guess what? There's things that we can do. So asking them and including that in the decision. You have a few other effective strategies you want us to remember. First, what they're saying is more more important than how they're saying it. Yes, if we can remind them, listen, a lot of kids are working on their speech sounds and it's okay that we have errors, you're gonna learn them. More importantly, never stop talking, never stop raising your hands, never stop communicating with your friends because what you have to say is far, far, far more important than how it comes out. And capability is key, meaning you should always let them know they mm -hmm. can do this. This is within their grasp. Mm -hmm. It's actually the coolest thing to work on speech with this because teaching them that they can do hard things and that they can retrain their brain by certain simple things shows them that, oh, I can do something that's really hard. I can be flexible and stretch, which applies to every aspect of their life moving forward. You like to bring in magical words mm -hmm. as part of that. This is my favorite. For the last 15 years as a speech therapist, we start every speech therapy lesson with my magic words. And it's essentially a brain boost. It's affirmations to remind them of their capability. So I'm amazing. I'm a great learner. What I have to say is important and I can speak clearly. They say that up front. Up front, every time. It reminds them, and eventually, like I start with them, and then eventually they know them and say them on their own, and it's a great reminder. And not to undermine or undersell tools. Like they do mm -hmm. need tools to help oh, them yes. progress and master mm -hmm. these sounds. Absolutely, tools and the right steps. It's so important, and as parents too, we wanna just jump in, okay, all right, now you can say shh, let's say ship without following a series of steps that builds in a fun, motivational way where they don't feel like a failure, mm -hmm. where they don't shut down. Mm -hmm. So not just jumping to, okay, do it like this or say it like this. They really do need to start with the simple. Can they hear the difference between the correct sound and the way they say it? And then after that, can they say it by itself? And then we're gonna add a vowel and then we're gonna go to words and then phrases and then sentences. And when we find success in those steps, it just builds upon it and it just makes them feel capable and it allows them to thrive. Okay, and because speech is, is you know, otherwise just a normal expression, right, mm -hmm. or, or skill, mm -hmm. how much do we pile on the praise or celebrate mm -hmm. and reward success without overdoing it and adding to this embarrassment we you, want to avoid? Yes, you definitely can't overdo it, in my opinion. Okay, good. I, <laughs> Hoop so and we, Yes, we get to be our children's greatest cheerleader in this. And again, even with those little things, if they're struggling, let's hear the difference Ooh, can you hear this but difference between this and this and celebrate them be like see you're awesome and we're gonna build upon it and we're gonna stretch your muscles and yes. grow and you can do this you're so good at this at what you do and and the tools you bring to these kids lives and you have some online resources that parents yes. can access and kind of link arms with you toward progression absolutely we have an online speech sound Academy where they can come on and work through those steps with miss Ashley through guidance with or it's like a clear path for children and their families to master speech sounds at home as well as some fun things on Instagram some, some great tips and some tools that you can use and some other resources on my website. So How that's we at mymagicwords.fun. Mymagicwords.fun. Doesn't yes. that say it all? Thank yes. you for bringing this important Thank aspect you. of this topic to our table today.